Hi everyone. In this video we're taking a look at the Pythagorean Theorem. So what is the Pythagorean Theorem? So let's take a look at a definition, a sketch, and a formula. So given a right triangle with legs of lengths A and B and a hypotenuse of length C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we have a right triangle. The two sides next to the right angle are the legs. And the side across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. And it's always opposite the right angle. OK, example one. Do 6, 7, and 8 make the sides of a right triangle? So 6 and 7 must be the legs, because they're the smaller lengths and 8 must be the hypotenuse. So test to see if it works in the Pythagorean theorem. Is it true when we substitute these values into a squared plus b squared equals c squared? So I will substitute 6 in for a, 7 in for b, and 8 in for c. I get 36 plus 49 equals 64, 85 equals 64. Well, that's not true, therefore, these lengths do not make up sides of a right triangle. They might work for another kind of triangle. Specifically, it will work for an acute triangle. Example two, find the lengths of the hypotenuse of the triangle below. We know the two legs because they make up the right angle. We don't know the hypotenuse, so we can substitute eight and 15 in for the legs and solve for C. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. Combine these two numbers and I get 289 equals C squared. Now I need to take the square root to get rid of squaring because the square Square rooting is the inverse operation of squaring, so I want to get rid of that square. And 289 is a perfect square. I get c equals 17. Usually when you take the square root of a number, the answer can be positive and negative, like square root of 4 is 2 or negative 2. However, because we're looking for lengths here, um, the number must be positive. So we're always going to deal with positive numbers for these problems. Example three, find the missing side. This time, we know the hypotenuse is 14 and one of the legs is 7. So I'm looking for the other leg. We can call this B that we're looking for. Substitute our knowns into the Pythagorean theorem. And we're solving for B. And I need to take the square root to get B by itself. Now, we could just plug this into the calculator and round. However, let's try to simplify in radical form, and that will give us a more exact answer. So are there any perfect square factors of 147? So, so here's a, a short list here of perfect squares starting with root 4, square root of 4 would be 2, and root 9 would be 3. And I'm going to do it all the way up to root 100, which would be 10. So the idea is, which one of these would be a factor of 147? Well, 49 is a factor of 147. In fact, 49 times 3 is 147. And then I can rewrite this as the square root of 49 times the square root of 3. And what is the square root of 49? 7. So our solution is 7 root 3. And that's how we do it in simplest radical form. Example 4, what is the diagonal of a rectangle with sides 10 and 16 root 5? Well, the diagonal is going to split the rectangle into two halves and will in fact be the hypotenuse of both of these triangles. So the sides of the rectangles end up being the legs of the triangle and the diagonal is the hypotenuse. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem here to find the diagonal D. 
So when I square 16 root 5, it's the same as multiplying it times itself. And of course, 10 squared is 100. So how do we do 16 root 5 times 16 root 5? Well, we multiply 16 times 16, which is 256, and root 5 times root 5, which is 25, which simplifies to 5. So this would be 256 times 5 plus 100 equals d squared. Let's just make a little room here. So now, multiply 256 times 5 and add 100 which is 1380, 1380. And now we have to take the square root of 1380. So again, I have to simplify this in radical form. So I'm just going to test to see which of these may work. Uh, and I can get a calculator and, and try different numbers. 4 ends up uh, being a factor of 1380. 4 times 345 is 1380. And the square root of 4 is 2, so our answer simplifies to 2 root 345. Example 5 is 20, 21, and 29, a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so what's a Pythagorean triple? A Pythagorean triple is a set of three whole numbers that satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to test these three numbers here, these three lengths, into the formula and see if it works. So 20 and 21 must be A and B because of the, the smallest lengths. 29 must be C because it's the larger one. So now all we have to do is check to see if the left side of the equation equals the right side of the equation. So I'm going to use my calculator here and find 21 squared, 441. And also I need to know 29 squared, which is 841. So is 400 plus 441 equal to 841? And the answer is yes. So it worked. Therefore, 20, 21, 29 must be a Pythagorean triple. OK, so let's see how we can use the Pythagorean theorem with finding area of an isosceles triangle. So we know that area equals 1 half base times height, and that the base and the height must form a 90 degree with respect to each other in order to find the area, in order to use these dimensions to get the area. So in example 6, we have an isosceles triangle. Now I have a dimension for the base. It's 14. But 9 isn't the height. I need to draw this red segment here that ends up being a perpendicular bisector to this isosceles triangle. I have to find this height in order to substitute it into area equals one half base times height. So I know that the base angles of the isosceles triangle are congruent and I also know that this height is an angle bisector and perpendicular bisector to the base which means it cuts 14 into 7 and 7. So now I can just look at one of the triangles here, and I can see that the leg is 7 and h, and the hypotenuse is 9. So I could substitute that into the Pythagorean theorem and solve for h. So I get h squared equals 32. And I take the square root of that to get h by itself. 32 simplifies 16 times 2. And the square root of 16 is 4. So 4 root 2 is my height. And my base is 14. I could substitute these into the equation, multiply them together. And I'll leave it in radical form. So 1 half of 14 would be 7. 7 times 4 is 28, root 2 units squared. And that's how we find the area of an isosceles triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So there's so many applications for the Pythagorean theorem, and I hope these examples make sense. See you next time.